Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is John Campia, and this is a companion video. Now, what is a companion video? Well, I'm awfully glad that you asked. You see, every day on the John Campia Show, Monday through Friday, we save time for live questions, but we often don't have time to get around to all the live questions that get sent in, but I want to make sure those questions get answered in a video, so I gather up those unused questions, and we bring them here and address them on companion videos. And it is Wednesday, April the 17th today, so these are all questions that we didn't have time to get around to on the live John Campia Show earlier this morning, so let's not waste any more time. Let's start getting caught up, and we're going to start getting caught up with Randy Randy, who writes, the question is, I love Star Wars. We only see one side, that is, the Jedi side. You think we'll ever see the Force being used in different ways, like healing or magic? Well, like I, there, there's been different things in the extended universe, Randy Randy, that have expressed like the Force hasn't just been used by Jedis. There are other groups. There are other people that use the Force in different ways, some less effectively and whatever. We've never really seen that play out so much in the canon movies, though. Could we see them doing that? I'm going to guess no. <clears throat> I'm going to guess no. I mean, for example, we've got that kid in The Last Jedi who's on, you know, the casino planet. And at the end of the movie, it shows that he knows how to, he's got a little bit of force talent because he's able to get the broom to fly to himself, right? And he's not a Jedi. So, I, I mean... We might see little glimpses of it, but I don't know that we're going to see it really in depth. I mean, a lot of the Star Wars tales have been told in the Imperial Age, in the Empire Age, which they just kill Force users. So maybe we could moving forward. It's possible, I guess. I wouldn't bet on it, but it, yeah, it's possible, I think. All right, James L.H. writes, uh, It's sad people are trying to spoil Endgame. YouTubers trying to create conflict with Hemsworth and Brie Larson. Now read that Mark Hamill defends someone as he had an emotional reaction watching the Star Wars trailer. I mean, look, it, it is sad. There are some people, but, but let's be honest, James. We all can do this sometimes. This isn't just some, it's not like, being pissy little whiners is only confined to a few people. We have all been pissy little whiners at one point or another, right? It's it's all of us. To some degree, it's all of us. It's me, it's you, it's other people. Now, it is true that some people are more prone to doing that than others. And there are some YouTube channels that they they just thrive on hate clicks and anger and things. Yeah, that all that kind of stuff happens. But let's not pretend like it's only those people. It's all of us. All of us have that tendency sometimes. It is some of the darker parts of being human, but hey, that's the way it is. The key is that we recognize it for what it is and we move past it. So uh, that's kind of the hope. But anyway, James, uh, Doshi writes, so John, you could go to Star Wars Galaxy Edge for free for the rest of your life, but... You have to eat ketchup on eggs, take care of a cat. What do you do? Well, if I just have to do it once, no problem. If I have to do it for the rest of my life, nope, because I'll die because I literally start to gag and I'd vomit if I ate ketchup on eggs. It just the just seeing people eat ketchup on eggs nearly makes me vomit. So I wouldn't be able to survive to enjoy Star Wars land. Uh, okay, uh, Alex Von Gollum writes, Hey team, if the Avengers are Victor in Endgame, it'd be great to see... Uh, it would be great if we get an Into the West equivalent for the opening credit score. Thoughts? Well, I, I think you mean for the end credit score, because that's where Into the West played in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Greatest closing song of any movie of all time. Uh, Into the West by Annie Lennox. At the end of Return of the King, greatest, most appropriate, most fitting song ever in history. Uh, won the Academy Award. <clears throat> I don't know, because here's the thing. The Lord of the Rings Return of the King was the end. That was the end. There's another MCU movie coming two months after Avengers Endgame. I mean, look, people get mad at me when I say this, but it is true. At the end of the day, Endgame is just another MCU movie. It's an important one. It's, it's a key one, sure, but there's another one two months later in Spider-Man Far From Home. And we got a couple coming next year. And so there's a bit of a difference there between the ending of Return of the King and, say, the ending of Endgame. And so I see them more traditionally with the triumphant kind of music rather than an into the West sort of thing. Uh, David Sickles writes, uh, uh, Blue Jackets, that's what Columbus Blue Jackets, sweet baby. I was there last night. We want the cup. You ain't getting the cup. Sorry about that. But what an upset. Knocking out the President Trophy winning Tampa Bay Lightning in a sweep. Tampa Bay locked up their playoff spot just at game 68 of the season 
that's how long they've been coasting. I mean, it's 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 truly one of the great upsets. Um, I mean, it's not like it was the NHL Finals, but still for first round, President Trophy winner, I think it's the first time ever in NHL history that the, the number one team in the NHL got swept in the first round of the playoffs. It's crazy. So congrats to you and the Blue Jackets, man. All right, Dakota Walker writes, have you heard Tom Welling is in Arrows last season? Yes, I have. Now, some people want to speculate, he's going to play Clark Kent. I, I don't believe that's the case. Uh, would be kind of interesting he did. It's going to be cool to see what kind of role that he plays. But I loved seeing him in Lucifer. It's going to be nice to seeing him in Arrow as well. So I kind of liked hearing that. Uh, Jim Copeland writes, will we be wearing uh, headphones? Oh, I will be wearing headphones before Endgame starts to ensure I don't hear someone scream a dang spoiler beforehand. I don't trust people. Oh, dude, listen. Uh, honestly, and I, I, I don't say I want this, but I would fear for the life of anybody in some, one of these, particularly on like an opening night, if somebody in a packed movie theater yelled out a major spoiler, I, I I don't know that they're getting out alive. They're certainly not getting out unscathed. Um, Because there will be people in that theater. You know, if you have like 300 people in the theater, odds are a couple of them might be a little violent people. Um, yeah, I would... I, and I'm not I'm not endorsing that. I'm just saying I would literally fear for somebody's life if they did something like that. Uh, anyway, really tired. 64 writes uh, final Dark Phoenix trailer just dropped your thoughts. Yeah, we talked about that on the show this morning. I think it's great. It's actually the trailer they showed us at CinemaCon a couple of weeks ago, and I really enjoy it. I think it's a great trailer. It doesn't mean the movie's going to be any good. It hasn't changed my opinion that the movie's probably going to end up falling flat on its face. But I thought this was a great trailer. And I thought they should have led, maybe not with this specific trailer, but I thought they should have led with a trailer of this caliber and maybe more people would be excited about this movie. I thought it was quite nice. Uh, I'm Upset writes, is the Vince McMahon biopic dead? Somebody else asked that the other day. I don't know if it's dead, but I mean, at the same time, it never really had full motion either. Like it was never a full steam ahead kind of situation, but with all the stuff going on lately with the John Oliver report on Vince McMahon and stuff like that, I don't know. It could be in trouble. Uh, Aaron Moen writes, any word on the Halo TV series from Showtime? None. I've heard nothing about it. I don't even know if it's still alive. Now, for all I know, it's shooting right now. Actually, it might be shooting, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I, I honestly, I can't remember, but I haven't heard anything recently, to be honest with you. Uh, Doshi writes, over under 5% at the end of Endgame, we find out Pepper is pregnant with <laughs> Hulk babies. What a twist that would be. Well, that could then lead into old man Logan, right? Uh, no, I will I will firmly take, even though I know you're joking, Doshi, Doshi, I will still take the under 5% on that. Kevin Lewis writes, you've been playing Rush the whole trip. Can we hear a little variety? Driver Rush. Oh, Rush is variety, bitch. That is from uh, Kyle Newman's Fanboys. Uh, I adore Kyle Newman. I, first of all, I love that movie. And he's just a great ambassador for geek culture, Kyle Newman. And I had the uh, real pleasure of having him in studio a while ago to talk about one of, my, one of my favorite books that I have right now. It's just, it's downstairs is this great Dungeons, this history of Dungeons and Dragons book that he and Sam Witwer and a couple of other really great, good guys put together. And it's wonderful. I had a chance to sit down and chat with him about that. And uh, yeah, just a really cool guy and who made a really cool movie. Rush is variety. Yeah, that's uh, so that's from uh, fanboys. I love that. Thank you for throwing that out there. That's a deep cut. Uh, John McKendry writes, do you think bringing back Palpatine in episode nine as anything more uh, than a force ghost diminishes his death and return of the Jedi. No, it's, it's funny, John. I've been asked that by a number of people in the last couple of days. I don't at all. Uh, because it wasn't so much his death in return of the Jedi as it, the important thing was his defeat in return of the Jedi. You know, because some people also ask, oh, do you think that this undermines, you know, the prophecy that Vader was the one to bring balance to the force if Palpatine's still alive? My answer is No. Because what happened? The the force was out of balance. The darkness was ruling the galaxy. The Sith were running the galaxy with oppression and torture and genocide and all that kind of stuff. What did Darth Vader do? He turned back to the light at the last second and he defeated the Emperor, ending the reign of the Empire. Whether or not Palpatine survived that fall is irrelevant. He was defeated and balance was restored to the force. And for decades, 
peace was restored to the galaxy. Peace and justice was starting to be restored to the galaxy. So regardless of whether or not Palpatine lived or died, I mean, eventually another bad guy is going to come along. It doesn't matter whether it's Palpatine or somebody else, but Vader fulfilled the prophecy. He did bring peace back to the galaxy. He did restore balance to the force. Now that doesn't mean there's never going to be another problem ever again. Nor does another problem arising, even if it's Palpatine, undermine what Vader did. But no, I, I don't see it undermining it at all. Because the important thing, once again, wasn't the death of Palpatine. The important thing was the defeat of Palpatine. And um, that's what we got. So no, I, I don't think it undermines that at all, to be honest with you. Uh, Patrick Conway writes, Do you think Hydra having Pym particles will be back? No, I think they've pretty much finished with Hydra. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> I think they're pretty much done with Hydra. So no, I, I don't think we're going to see that return. I really hope they don't. They've just gone back to that well way too many times. Uh, Doshi writes, finish season one of Game of Thrones. Wow, season two tonight. Man, you still got a ways to go. I hope you're able to get all caught up before the big season finale. I hope you're able to get caught up before the series finale so you can watch it live with everybody else. But I salute you, sir, for that mission on getting caught up there. Um, Sedek13 writes, uh, one of three. Episode 9, first act. Rey and Kylo start as rivals. Second act, Emperor comes into the picture. Rey and Kylo realize they need to fight together. Uh, I doubt that. Um, in order to defeat the Emperor, Kylo will not be redeemed as per se, but at the end of the movie, Rey and Kylo will establish a new order of Grey Force users called Skywalkers that use the dark side and the light side, thus the Force being in balance, not tipping towards the dial. No, no, I don't see that at all. Because remember... The dark side is not something to be tampered with. The dark side is seductive. It's the moment you even, remember, in the Star Wars lore, the moment you even start to entertain the dark side, it'll dominate your path. Remember what Yoda told Luke, you know, once you start even just a little bit, starting giving into rage and hate and anger, all the things of the dark side, it will forever dominate your destiny. Forever, that'll become your path. Um, so no, now I know in, in some extended stuff, there's stuff, talk about gray Jedi and all that kind of stuff. I, I really, and a lot of people thought going into the last Jedi, they were going to start Luke's become a gray Jedi. And I kept telling people, no, Luke is not a gray Jedi. Uh, but there were a lot of people insisting there were gray Jedi. Anything is possible, but I really don't see them going down that path. And ultimately that's the problem I've always even had with the concept of gray Jedi is it retcons everything it's taught us about the dark side of the, of the force. That once you start entertaining the dark side of the force, it will consume you and it will destroy you. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> that's just kind of the way I see that. So no, I, I don't think they're going to go in that direction. Now, whether or not Kylo and Rey have to team up at some point to battle the Emperor, I still don't think so. But that's more plausible. I think that's more plausible. Even though I, I don't believe that's what will happen, it is certainly a more plausible theory, and I wouldn't fall out of my seat in surprise and shock if that's what actually happens. So let's keep our eyes open on that. Okay, uh, John Watkin writes, It's funny how Cap will be a wartime hero to Captain Marvel. However, she'll just know Tony as a cocky billionaire playboy ph philanthropist from the 1990s. I don't know. Like, how famous was Tony in the 90s? I mean, certainly there were some people who knew who he was, but honestly, had he really achieved his big, like his, he only really achieved his height in like 2010. Was he as big of a deal back in the nineties? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if she would have, have ever heard of him, to be honest with you. Well, I, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe she did. Um, <clears throat> Chris Douglas writes, uh, I watched full Disney investor stream. Uh, Kevin Mayer confirmed Behind the scenes and extras for Disney Plus content during speech and demo video showed extras tab. Love from Sky. Yeah, I had a few other people mention that to me because a big discussion that's come up around Disney Plus is, well, I mean, well, what happens if it doesn't have behind the scenes and the, the, the extra features that we get on physical media? But apparently they did say you're going to get extra features on the Disney Plus stream as well, which I think is fantastic. So let's see if they actually follow through on that, Chris. All right, Dakota Walker writes, where does the MCU go with Avengers story post um, post Endgame? Oh, who knows? There's no way to guess. That is a that is a question 100% determined by how they conclude Endgame. And right now, nobody has any idea how they really resolve Endgame. 
without knowing how Endgame ends, we can't even begin to guess or speculate where the Avengers storyline goes from there. For all we know, at the end of Endgame, there is no Avengers. Think about that. I mean, what happens if they just distort and alter reality to the point that the Avengers were never formed? And that's where we start. What if, for example, in the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer, you know, Spider-Man meets Nick Fury and says, you're Nick Fury, but what if he just knows Nick Fury is the head of S.H.I.E.L.D.? What if there is no Avengers that he founded? What if there's none of that? And that's why Nick Fury doesn't have Avengers back up when he goes to where Peter is on his vacation and he just needs to ask Peter for help. So for all we know, there is no Avenger at the end. So it is absolutely impossible to say Dakota until we see Endgame. Then once we see Endgame, we can start to speculate, okay, now that we know where we are, we can speculate where this might go. But until we know where we are, there's no way to tell. Uh, AFC writes, how did this idiot even get Endgame footage to leak? Look, <clears throat> around the world, a lot of different people have to have their hands on it. You know, theaters start to get their versions of the movies to test it and be ready for screening and all that kind of stuff. And that's just why it's so difficult. We live in a world, I, I don't have my phone here, but we live in a world where almost all of us walk around with a global telecommunications device in our pocket, an audio visual telecommunication global communication device. We call it a cell phone. In, in a world like that, where so many people are involved in the making of a movie, and then the distribution of a movie and the exhibition of a movie, it's going to happen. So there's a million different ways some idiot could have got their hands on it. It's just really unfortunate. Javier Rios 405 writes, what did you like better, Titan Season 1 or Cloak and Dagger Season 1? Ooh. Both of them have their upside, and I was not thrilled with either. Uh, I think they were both okay. I'll, I'll lean towards Cloak and Dagger. I'll lean towards Cloak and Dagger. Although Cloak and Dagger had a horrible, I didn't like their last episode at all. And, and I haven't watched season two, to be honest with you, or any of season two yet, because season one ended so badly. Whereas I'll say for Titans, I wasn't really all that impressed with the show, but it the season one did end pretty strong. So I'll give it that. Still, I'll lean towards Cloak and Dagger. Neither, neither of these shows are bad. But neither of these shows are particularly good either. That, that's just my opinion at any rate. Uh, John G. writes, first time Super Chatter. Well, thanks for joining us, John G. Uh, John, what's your take on the final Dark Phoenix trailer? My opinion, I think it's the only th that the only thing more powerful than Gene is a person with enough will to eat eggs with ketchup on them. Uh, they're making her out to be a total bat. I'll tell you what, I got more out of that trailer. And like I said, I'd seen it a couple of weeks ago. But I got more out of that trailer than anything else they put out about this movie so far. I thought this trailer had great emotion. I thought it had some intensity. <clears throat> it had a couple of big wow moments in it. Like that whole, are you threatening me? That's right. That was a great moment. Her being consumed by the Phoenix Force in space. I, it was a I thought it was a terrific trailer. I still, unfortunately, am pretty pessimistic about the, the chances of it being a quality movie. Fingers crossed. We'll go in. We'll leave our expectations at the door. Maybe it'll surprise us. But as far as the trailer goes, I thought the trailer was really damn good, man. All right. Syrian Douglas writes, crazy to me that ScarJo has never won an Oscar nomination. <sighs> Is it, though? Because let me just bring this up here. Um, Scarlett Johansson, IMDb. Okay, look. The thing about Scarlett Johansson is, while she's a terrific actress, I don't think there's ever been a movie where you can make a solid argument that she should have gotten an Academy Award nomination for. Um, Match Point, you could have given her a Best Supporting Actress nomination, but I don't think there's a strong argument to be made for that. Uh, Girl with a Pearl Earring, you could have... Uh, given her an actress nomination for that, but I don't think there's a a really super strong like argument that she got snubbed or anything like that. Uh, Lost in Translation is probably the one you can make your best argument for, but when you look at that year, it was a pretty stacked year too. So, I mean, it is a little odd to think of Scarlett Johansson being as good of an actress as she is, 
not having an Academy Award nomination, but really at the end of the day, there was no particular year where it's like, oh, foregone conclusion, she should have been nominated for that. I don't know that you can make that argument yet, but it doesn't take away from the fact that she is a really solid, multi-talented actress who can do comedy and drama and action, and she can pretty much do it all. Man, if I was a producer, I would, damn, I would I would lock her up in any kind of a contract that I could to be in whatever movies of the mind that she would want to be in, I would put her in. Like, I, I just think she's really multi-talented. Okay, Aiden Norris writes, what are the chances they bring back Sylvester's Captain America theme in the end game would be fitting for final emotional moment with Captain America? Well, I mean, here's the problem, Aiden. You're making an assumption that he's going to die. I mean, it's clear from the wording of your of your statement there, you think he's going to die, and that is not a foregone conclusion. But still, I have we not heard Sylvester's theme? I, did we not hear Sylvester's theme in, um, in Winter Soldier? I thought we did. I'm almost pretty sure we did. I could be wrong about that. But I'd say there's a decent chance. Aiden, I, I think there's a pretty decent chance for something like that. Uh, Orange Hand writes, Without hair, Robert Meyer Burnett is Varys. With hair, he's Powers Booth. A much younger Powers Booth. Um, I don't see the Powers Booth. The, 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 uh, um, the, the Game of Thrones one I see a little bit. But uh, that's just because he's got the quick wit of Varys as well. Uh, Rem, uh, Ramiro Chapa Jr. writes, does The Rock earn the name Franchise Viagra? Absolutely he does. Uh, I already wanted to see Shazam and uh, fast movie sequels, but don't care about sequels to Rampage, Skyscraper, Baywatch, G.I. Joe, etc. Well, here's the thing, though. You, the math is the math. I mean, I broke out this chart a while ago where I said, okay, here's all the Fast and the Furious movies without Dwayne The Rock Johnson and how much they made. Blah, you know, this much, this much, this much, this much. Now, here's the Fast and the Furious movies box office once Dwayne Johnson showed up. Monster, 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 monster. There's no denying that. And it all happened when Dwayne The Rock Johnson showed up. You take a movie like Rampage. That movie made some money. Also, let me pull it up here. Rampage... Uh, uh, box office. That was a movie that had no business making any money, and it made almost $430 million. That movie had no business making any money at all. Like, none. It should have made none money. That's the money it should have made. None. None money. Um, and yet, it makes almost $430 million. You think it makes that money if it's not starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson? I don't think so. Look at Jumanji. I mean, most, even the studio was projecting maybe $500 million for that. You think that movie makes nine over $900 million? Almost a billion? If it's not Dwayne The Rock Johnson in there? I'm sorry, but it doesn't. No way. I think you could have replaced... Uh, Kevin Hart's great in it. I think you could have replaced Kevin Hart, and it still could have made that much. Jack Black is amazing in it, but you could have replaced Jack Black and it could have still made that much. You take Dwayne The Rock Johnson out of that, it just doesn't have the draw. It just doesn't have the draw. So yeah, I, I absolutely believe Ramiro. Now, it's not automatic. Nobody's automatic, right? Nobody's automatic. You can't put somebody in a really terrible looking movie and just expect it to make money no matter what. That doesn't exist anymore. But you put a guy like Dwayne The Rock Johnson in something that's got some potential, it's going to take off. And so, yes, I totally believe that while we get Baywatch and Skyscraper, movies that nobody wanted, um, you put them in something like Jumanji that's got a little bit of potential, boom, and it'll explode. Uh, a movie like Rampage, which had no business making any money whatsoever, makes $430 million. I, yeah, yeah, I, it's, he's not a 100% guaranteed bill, but he is franchise Viagra, I believe. Uh, Raven415201 writes, uh, P.S. You can just call me Raven. No need for you to read all the silly numbers. LOL. By the way, what is the origin story of Bring on the Filthy? Well, I've, I've been asked that many times. A quick <coughs> Coles version is this. Many years ago, I was doing a mailbag episode, and we started talking about should Fifty Shades of Grey, the upcoming, this is how long ago it was, the upcoming Fifty Shades of Grey movie, whether it should be... Uh, you know, rated R or whether it should get a uh, NC-17 and stuff like that. And basically, we we're just talking about some stuff. And I said, now, look, um, if there's not a need to have something in it really super explicit that would give an NC-17, they don't. And then I said something along the lines of, if I remember, probably said, <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong. I love the filthy. Bring on the filthy. 
I said it during that one show, then I moved on. And ever since then, bring on the filthy, people just started writing in and ending all their emails with bring on the filthy, bring on the filthy. And it kind of stuck ever since. So uh, that's where we are. And we have all now embraced the filthy. We are all one with the filthy. I think that's a very important thing. Thanks for asking, Raven. All right. Uh, Jeremy Riaz 405 writes, uh, Azazel was cool in first class. Would like to see more of him. Uh, that's one of two. Uh, apparently in the comics, he's Nightcrawler's father. Do you think they'll acknowledge this in Dark Phoenix? No. I don't even think Azazel's going to be there. Azazel's been dead in that universe for a long time. So I don't think there's going to be any acknowledgement of it. I, thought I don't think there's going to be any reference to it. Um, they certainly did set it up where he was his father in the movies. And it, he wasn't always his father in the comic books. That was kind of then arranged to be a thing. And uh, Mystique is his mother. But obviously, she's not his mother in the movies. So I don't know why they would do Azazel when Azazel's been dead forever. So... No, I'm going to guess that they're not. But I like the Azazel character in First Class as well. I thought he was pretty cool. Uh, Murray Reich writes, <clears throat> I feel bad for that one guy who takes out his phone during Endgame. Yeah, that is not going to be a good place to yell out spoilers or to pull out your phone or for your phone to go off. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to I I'm gonna make sure I silence my phone before I even leave my house when I go to the opening of Endgame. I'm going to, like, that's just one of those things because I don't want to be that guy. No way, Murray. No way. Uh, let's see. Uh, Murray Reich also writes, so John, did you order the Avengers portable toilet on that site yet? No, but uh, maybe I should. I am, uh, or they just bring an empty two liter, an empty two liter Diet Pepsi bottle and just have it very discreetly tucked down between my seat. It's, we all, like, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Uh, ben Elman writes, forced to go see Endgame at a theater that doesn't have assigned seating. Oh, freaking dark ages, man. Uh, how early do you think I need to get there to wait in line for good seats? Well, it all depends. Are you going the night it opens? Are you going five days after it opens? That's that's a big thing. I'm going to go on a limb here and assume that you're going the night it opens. If you're going the night it opens, minimum two hours. I say minimum, you got to get there two hours early. Minimum. I mean, I, but again, what a backward Dark Ages kind of BS is this? That you got to show up to a theater hours early because you don't even know what seat you're going to get. I mean, it's just freaking backwards thinking Dark Ages BS. It's There's no excuse for theaters not to have pre-signed seating. They're super easy to implement. There's absolutely no excuse for it. I, the fact that it's taken this long, when there, there are countries around the world that have that have had all pre-signed seating for 10 years or more, there's just no excuse for it. They got So I'm really sorry you got to put up with that BS, Ben. That sucks. Um, Carlos Herrera writes, Watch Star Wars episodes four through six, greatest films ever made. Uh, for the first time, loved Return of the Jedi, my favorite of the Star Wars movies. I uh, hated the new CGI, as you can tell, it doesn't belong. And I did not, and did not see the Vader to save Skywalker. Oh man, that's a, a father's love. Yeah, dude, Return of the Jedi is maybe the best movie ever made. Probably my all-time favorite movie is Return of the Jedi because Star Wars. And when I refer to Star Wars, I mean episodes four, five, and six, the original trilogy. I just think of them kind of as just one big thing. But if I had to break it down, Return of the Jedi is my all-time favorite movie. All-time favorite movie. It's the best. And that moment is just so good as Vader looks back and forth with that music. As going back with the Emperor's electrocuting his son and all that kind of stuff. And he looks back with the heavy breathing. Oh, God. It's just so beautiful filmmaking. I love it, man. I love it. I'm glad you had a chance to watch it, Carlos. Okay. Preston Walden writes... Big month. I am set to lens this Saturday on my feature film, Where the Land Meets the Sky. That's exciting, Preston. And next week, well, you know, exciting month. Dude, that is really exciting to actually be able to be involved and work in making film and making stories is amazing. I hope you have a great experience doing it, Preston. Good luck on that. And good luck to all of us as we go into watch Endgame. Thanks for sharing that, Preston. I really appreciate that, man. All right. Luke1234 writes, who has done more for cinema as a whole? Lucas, Spielberg, Cameron. Oh, no, that's not, not even a question. It's George Lucas. Spielberg is one of the great storytellers of all time, no doubt. Uh, James Cameron is one of the most successful filmmakers of all time, no doubt, and has done some work on trying to revolutionize 3D, but I don't give a crap about 3D. George Lucas changed filmmaking. 
because you know a lot of people forget they're the ones who started Pixar and Skywalker Sound, which is still kind of the de facto sound mixing place for all movie or for a lot of movies. Uh, Industrial Light and Magic, the the best visual effects company in the world. Um, I mean, got the the, the sound. Um, it's just what they've done, what George Lucas has done, the way, I mean, the very fact that we have digital cinema today is partly responsible because of George Lucas really pushing digital cinema during the age of the prequels. I, I just, so then that's not even considering the, the uh, impact movies like and franchises like Indiana Jones, Star Wars and all that has had. It's, it's got, there's no question to me. If you're asking me for cinema as a whole, there's, it's not even a contest. It's George Lucas. Absolutely, it's George Lucas to me. Uh, I can't think of a good username writes, Theory, Thanos is defeated and the Avengers trap him in the quantum realm. I had somebody else write that into me um, maybe a couple weeks ago that the quantum realm is not just being set up in the Avengers as the means in which the Avengers will try to set things right, but maybe ultimately becomes how they imprison Thanos. That's a theory that's been going around. So I don't think that's what they're going to do, but there's merit to it. There is merit to that theory, absolutely. Uh, he follows up with, with all the leaks, should Marvel just release the movie early? Earlier? No. No, you don't change your business plan. There's no point in doing that. You very specifically plan that date to move it now with throw a lot of things out of whack. Plus, 99% of the people out there who are going to go see Endgame don't even know that spoilers have gotten leaked. Right? It's only those of us who hang out in the online spheres and all that kind of stuff. Most people on the planet don't even know there is a leak, let alone will be ruined by it. So, no, absolutely not. Disney should not change the release date. Okay. Uh, Tim Horton's Better Than Starbucks writes, A friend asked me something interesting. $15 million cash but you can't watch a movie again. Would you accept? I said yes in a heartbeat. Tough one though. No, it's it's not all that tough. I, I take the money. I absolutely take the money. I will miss movies. Uh, that sucks. I will lament that. But with $15 million, I can make sure my family is all taken care of for the rest of their lives. I could probably adopt like 20 underprivileged families and have them set comfortably. Uh, and give them advantages and give them a, a thing in life. I could, you know, Ann and I could buy the home that we want, uh, adopt a bunch of dogs and retire, and we'd still have money left over. Uh, all that, and I would have to trade away all of that to watch movies. Hey, movies is a big thing to me. It would hurt, but yeah, man, that's, with all the good you could do, yeah, you take the $15 million and you do some good, and uh, I, I think that's the best way to go. So I, I would go with the money. $1 million? That might be a different. $1 million would be different. $15 million? Ugh, yeah, I think I probably have to take it. Uh, Preston Walden writes, I feel that Cap will return to the past and get that dance. Thor will be off finding the rest of Asgardians. Tony will marry and retire. No idea about Hulk. All popular theories, Preston. Uh, Cap going back to the past. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's possible. Uh, getting that dance. Thor going off finding Asgardians. That's been brought up a number of times. Uh, Tony marrying. That's been brought up a number of times. So, again, I think there are other theories as well that are more likely, but these are all, these are all valid. These are, I mean, I think there's good reason to think all of those things. So we're only now like a week away, ladies and gentlemen. We are like a week away now from finding out for sure. All right. I can't think of a good new username rights. Somebody's posting spoilers on the super chat. I haven't seen any spoilers in the super chat, but maybe in the live chat, there were people posting spoilers in the live chat because that's what happens. These idiot websites spread around the spoilers. Trolls get their hands on the spoilers and go and try to spoiler bomb. Fortunately, we had fact checker Jonathan and Ray in there moderating and keeping it mostly under control. But hey, you know, idiots are going to be idiots and all you can do is minimize their idiot damage that they do. Uh, Zombatron5678 writes, Saddest part about Logan is that Professor X, after everything he's done in the films, ended up buried in an unmarked grave on the side of the road. Um... I think there are sadder things other than where he was buried, but yeah, but do remember Logan is not exactly in continuity, nor is it canon. Um, it's almost kind of a different timeline. That's the thing about, and the director said that himself, but I, I mean, the, the whole story of Logan and of Professor Charles Xavier in it is a story of heartbreak. 
Because if you read between the lines of the movie, he accidentally killed the X-Men. He killed the X-Men as a result of his condition. And there's that, his mental health, his physical health, and then ultimately dying at the hands of somebody he trusted. He thought it was Logan. And just then that whole plea from, from Logan as... as so he's dying, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it was, oh my God, that was heartbreaking. I'll be honest, where he ends up buried, to me, that's an afterthought. I'll be honest, that's an afterthought to me, but oh man, the whole story was one of sorrow, which is part of the thing that makes that movie so bloody brilliant. Uh, Mr. Hero 17 writes, um, can't the individual who posted the video of Endgame face jail time or sued? He can't legally do that. I thought when you go to early test screenings, you have to sign a legal. I, I, but first of all, we don't know that this got taken from a test screening. It could have been snuck in uh, many, many different ways. But yes, you can bet that Disney right now, the very dark side of things, Mickey Mouse is hiring international hitmen. Uh, if not hitmen, he's hiring uh, investigators around the world to try to find out who did this and how it happened and then to hold those responsible to account. So yeah, I think they can. I hope they catch him and I hope he does get jail time, to be honest with you. Um, Raymond uh, Verrata writes, can the MCU now use adamantium and cap shield now? Well, they could, but I don't know how you retcon all that. Like adamantium has never been a thing in the MCU and they've gone out on a limb and said, a vibranium is the most powerful substance in the universe. I thought it was supposed to be adamantium. Well, they didn't have adamantium, so I don't know how you retcon that. So I don't know. I don't even know if they ever use adamantium. Uh, they might br bring Wolverine in and just say it's instead of adamantium being bounded to his bones, they might say it's vibranium since that's already been established in the MCU. I don't know that. Uh, but since Cap Shield is already made of vibranium and they're already saying that's the strongest substance in the universe, I don't see any reason for them to retcon that. So I don't think so. Uh, Chief DOG1100 writes, I don't want anyone to die in Endgame. I think the movie can still be an epic emotional roller coaster without anyone dying. Oh, I agree. <clears throat> it doesn't have to have people dying, but, you know, death in these movies is a, a narrative plot point. And so... While I don't believe they have to kill anybody, I'm totally open to them killing characters. I'm open to it. If it's going to have good dramatic impact, I'm open to it. I just, if you're going to kill somebody, kill them. Don't kill them in like by the end of the movie. Oh, look, they're back. Don't kill them in at the beginning of the next movie. Oh, look, they're back. Like cut out the fake killing. Just if you're going to kill somebody, kill somebody. That's my only thing. I'm fine if they do. I'm fine if they don't. But if you do, kill them and, and actually make it real. You know what I mean? Uh, Eric Thede writes, Claudia Gray's new Star Wars book is really good. I haven't checked it out yet. It's called Master Apprentice. And it's kind of, if I understand it right, it revolves around Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi during Obi-Wan's younger years uh, being an apprentice of Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, look, I really like Claudia Gray's writing. I really do. I, I like her work. So even though I've kind of given up on Star Wars books, I may pick that one up just because it's Claudia Gray doing it. Uh, Michael uh, Chapman writes, love the show. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate that. Terrell Wise writes, will the MCU shows be the same budget as the MCU movies? No, they will be very big budgets for TV shows. They'll be very healthy budgets for TV shows. Uh, big budgets for TV shows, but no, they're not going to be the same budgets as the movies. Uh, Guy Volt writes, you doing the end game review dressed as Black Widow? No, no, probably not. I'll probably just have my Avengers jacket on for that. Uh, Raymond Verrata writes, uh, Avengers are after Infinity War. I don't think Disney would want another cruise ship full of, cry of kids crying after they see their Avengers die. They will all come back. Um, <clears throat> I don't think Disney should be worried about that. Look, these are not G-rated films. These are PG-13 films. The Avengers movies are PG-13. They're not G. They're not PG. They're PG-13. And so some people are going to die. You know? And whether kids cry in cruise ships or not, that's not the big concern. The concern is, did we make a great movie that our audience loved and appreciated? And, and maybe it's not appropriate for the youngest of young kids, but 
That's why they're not making them G movies. They're making them PG-13. So I'm okay with that, and I think they'll be okay with that too. Uh, Eddie Barber writes, Warner Brothers just canceled Swamp Thing, and I'm pissed. I, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true at all. Uh, I know that's what people started running around with, but everybody should check. Uh, like I'll take, I'll double check right now. <clears throat> but where are you at? <clears throat> yeah, no, they didn't cancel Swamp Thing. What has happened? I'm looking at the Hollywood Reporter right now. What has happened was they changed season one from a 13 episode order to a 10 episode order. That that's it. It hasn't said they've canceled the series. There's no other details. So anybody running around with that double check the source and don't just take it at face value. So no, they haven't canceled Swamp Thing. Uh, Ryan Loner writes, a bit late, but happy birthday, Beverly Clearly. Oh, the author, yeah. Uh, still with us at 103. Isn't that crazy? Um, uh, Zhi Ying Di writes, no Shazam spoiler discussion anymore? No, I talked about this about a week ago. Uh, fact is, I was, I was late because I got sick and stuff like that. So and my whole thing is, if I can't do a review or spoiler review in time, then I just don't do it. There's no point in doing a Shazam spoiler review at this point and spoiler discussion at this point. It's just too late. I missed it. Um, I do the same thing with reviews. If, I, if I'm not able to review it by the opening weekend, then I don't do a review. And if I can't do a spoiler discussion by the Sunday or Monday that the movie's already come out, then I don't really see a lot of point in doing it. So no, uh, unfortunately, and it sucks, but it's too late to do a Shazam spoiler discussion. Uh, Jamie Lee 10 writes, forgot to mention huge thanks to Ashley and Robert. Yeah, huge. I love having them on the show. It's great. Uh, Ryan Loner writes, forget Han. How are we supposed to buy the guy who ran over innocent civilians with a tank for literally no reason as one of the good guys? Ryan, I think you're mistaking Fast and the Furious 7 for Fast and the Furious 6. Because I believe that was Luke Evans' character that did the stuff with the tank. And I believe that was in Fast and the Furious 6, not Jason Statham's character in Fast and Furious 7. So I think you're getting those ones mixed up, mixed up if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Ryan follows up with, I assume Fast and Furious 9 is going to reveal someone worse behind Cypher. That's a Charlize Theron character. So they team up with her... Ah, uh, no. Like, just because they did it once in their movies doesn't mean they, they do it all the time, so. And I can't wait for Hobbs versus Shaw. It's gonna be, they showed us a bunch of footage at CinemaCon of Hobbs versus Shaw. It looks crazy. I cannot wait to see this. I think it's gonna be awesome. Uh, Rod V69 writes, do you think we will see Boba Fett and the Mandalorian? No. Uh, whether we do or don't, would you like to see Boba Fett and the Mandalorian? No. Uh, no reason to make the universe smaller. There's just no point in making the universe smaller. Um, just because Boba Fett also happened to wear Mandalorian armor, why does that mean he should cross over into the Mandalorian show? The completely different things. Uh, I don't think they should do the, anything that's going to shrink the universe. It doesn't make sense. So I both don't want Boba Fett to show up in this show, and I don't think he will. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's how I feel about it, Rod V at any, at any point, but anything is possible. I mean, anything is possible. They could do it. They, they could, I think they won't, but it's possible that they could, but no, if it were up to me, I would say, no, keep, keep this show about the Mandalorian. If you want to bring in little side recognizable characters, that's fine. That are minor in the background, but you don't bring in a character like Boba Fett. You know what I mean? Just keep him out of it. In my opinion, uh, Sean, <coughs> Medellin writes what's your opinions on the movie Frank with Michael Fassbender uh, discovered it on Netflix a few years back what a film honestly I've never seen it honestly off the top of my head I don't even think I've ever heard of it so I can't give an opinion on that Sean but thanks for pointing it out I might have to check that out because I like me some Michael Fassbender uh, Rod V90 or 69 writes with Endgame being a three hour movie do you expect a rise in the sale of adult diapers I look I'll tell you what I'll be honest I'm surprised like Depends and whoever else these adult diaper companies are, I'm surprised they haven't taken advantage of this and made some funny commercials while also promoting their product. I'm surprised they haven't jumped on top of this to take advantage of the situation. I wouldn't be surprised if they do at some point. All right. Alan Gonzalez writes, if this uh, int he first 20 minutes of the movie... I can't wait to see what's in the rest of the two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, so I, th I think what it is you're saying, Alan, is 
if what we've seen in the trailer so far is just the first 20 minutes, which, by the way, I don't believe that. I mean, Kevin Feige says that, but I don't know that I buy that, to be honest with you. But at any rate, if that's all in the first 20 minutes, who knows what's going to be in the remaining two hours and 40 minutes. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be crazy. We are a week away, ladies and gentlemen. We're almost there. I cannot wait. Thanks for sending that in, Alan. All right. Like, comment, subscribe rights. Had to push Avengers 4 back a week for my bro to come up from Job Corps. Uh, we saw Infinity War together, so I can't see this one without him. Dude, I love that. Hats off to you, sir. Th movies are shared experiences. Now, get me, don't get me wrong. Hey, if I got a free night and hands out, working late or whatever, I'll walk down the AMC Burbank 16 from time to time and go catch a movie by myself because I love movies. But movies at their core are big shared experiences. And for you to honor that by going with your brother, because you guys saw Infinity War together, you're going to go and see this one together, damn it. I love that. I tip my hat to you, sir. That is great. That is commitment. Stay spoiler free, but I think that's awesome that you're doing that, man. All right, Anthony DeRizzo writes, uh, where I live in uh, Pennsylvania, I have a Regal and a Cinemark. On April 26th, the Regal has 18 showings of Endgame, and the Cinemark has 43 showings. That's a lot. It is a lot. I remember, though, when the first Avengers movie opened, and I was at the AMC Burbank 16. It was playing on every single screen, almost around the clock. I mean, there had to have been 50 or 60 screenings of it opening night. It's crazy. It was, it was absolutely crazy in a madhouse, and I fully anticipate that same kind of circus for Endgame as well. Thanks. Good luck on that, Anthony. I hope you have a good time at it, man. All right, Michael Trillio Jr. writes, um, How do you recast Wolverine to please the fans? Simple. You don't give a shit about the fans. I know that sounds weird, but follow me. You cast the best Wolverine, and you don't give a crap about what the fans are going to think about the casting. Why? because everybody hated the casting of Hugh Jackman. They all hated it. I still remember the comments and everything. They cast a musical song and dance man to play Wolverine. He's not even anywhere near the right height. He doesn't look right at all. He's a Broadway singer and dancer. And you're making him Wolverine. They clearly don't know anything about Wolverine if they're getting this guy to play Wolverine. And how did it turn out? Now it's impossible for us to think of anybody other than Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine. They didn't give a crap what people were going to say about the casting. They knew he was the right guy. And they went out and they got the right guy. Um, ultimately, who gives a crap if the fans like the casting or not? It won't matter if the fans like the casting or not. All that matters is, do you get a person who will crush the role? You remember how much whining and complaining there was about Heath Ledger playing the Joker? Oh, God. People uh, people are uh, play amnesia now. People lie, too. People lie to it. like, I always knew Heath Ledger was a great choice. Liars. Most of y'all, liars. Because I remember. The North remembers. They, everybody whined and moaned. They're getting broke back, guy, is Joker. <laughs> and they said all these stupid, idiotic things. How'd that turn out? They knew he was a good actor. They knew Christopher Nolan knew he was right for the role because he knew the Joker he wanted. And he knew that was the guy to play it. We didn't know what Joker Christopher Nolan had in mind. We had no idea. And yet we all ma wa ma whined and moaned and complained. <clears throat> but the fact is, Keith Ledger, now he's not an all-time great actor, but he's a really good actor. When he's on his A game, when he was on his A game, Heath Ledger was a very good actor. And that should have been the only thing that mattered to us was they cast a good, solid actor. But everybody, he doesn't look like Joker at all. Who the hell looks like the Joker? Oh, he he's the guy from Brokeback Mountain. Oh, God. You know, it was all that kind of stuff. Look, bottom line, Michael, how do you recast Wolverine to please fans? You don't care. You don't care. Because here's the thing about us as fans. We're not professional filmmakers. We don't know the script. We don't know what they're going for. All we can do is sit back and hope they cast somebody who's a very talented performer and a very talented actor. That's all that should matter to us. Because the last time they casted Wolverine, they didn't care whether it pleased the fans or not. They only cared that they got a guy who was going to work. And ultimately, that's all that matters. And what happened? We as fans all got on board with it. So how do you recast Wolverine? 
by getting the best person for the role, getting somebody who's really talented, whether they're famous or not famous, it doesn't matter. Just get somebody who's really talented, a solid actor, and somebody that you know fits the role because you know the script. And then let the fans worry, worry about what the fans think of them later after the movie comes out. For now, don't even worry about it. So that's that's how I would approach it at any rate. Uh, Ron Crawford writes, uh, do you think Emperor will be back in the flesh in episode nine? If so, do you think we will see the prophecy established in the prequels come to full circle? Could it hurt Anakin's role in the prophecy? No, I, I addressed this a little bit earlier as well, Ron. Not at all. I think I do think we're going to see the Emperor back in the flash. I don't know that for certain, though. I, I'm not willing to put money on that. I think he will, but who knows? Um, but again, like I said earlier, I don't think it affects what happened in Return of the Jedi. I don't think it affects Anakin's role in the prophecy whatsoever. I think he was the one in the prophecy. I think he fulfilled the prophecy. I think it wasn't about the death of the Emperor. It was about the defeat of the Emperor. And uh, that's how I kind of see that all playing out, Ron. All right. Uh, is Kane writes, uh, Hey, John and Rob, love uh, everything uh, you pus... Oh, you, I love everything you do. If Marvel were to do a Spider-Man Craven the Hunter story, uh, would it be lackluster because of another fake death? I, I assume you're talking about Craven the Last Hunt, that storyline. So there's this story called Craven the Last, I believe it's called The Last Hunt, where Craven actually beats Spider-Man and apparently kills him. Like he shoots Spider-Man and buries him. <clears throat> now, what, as it turns out later, what you find out was he didn't shoot him with a bullet, he shot him with a tranquilizer to only knock him out for a while. But anyway, so Craven fights Spider-Man, defeats Spider-Man, buries Spider-Man, and we all think Spider-Man's dead. To kind of finalize his victory and show his supremacy over Spider-Man, he starts to dress as Spider-Man and goes around kicking the crap out of criminals even better than Spider-Man did it, including taking on, I'm trying to remember the name of the villain. I think, it, was it Vermin or something like that? Anyway, including this one villain that beat Spider-Man before, Craven goes out and beats that villain. And then Spider-Man comes back and Craven's like, I just wanted to prove the point. And I wanted to prove it to you. And then he goes off and retires. And I think Craven even commits suicide at the end of it because he's done everything he needed to do. Uh, anyway, would that be a great example or a horrible example, as I should say, of another fake death? Oh, absolutely would be. <clears throat> oh, he's killed Spider-Man. Oh, wait, he didn't kill Spider-Man. Yeah, that, that would be another example of another fake death. But that is a great story. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon because Craven is going to be in the Sp Sony universe. Spider-Man's in the Marvel universe. So I don't think we're going to see those two cross over. Uh, Ryan Loner writes, uh, if you're surprised what Lucifer got away with on network TV, try Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. It literally has a song titled, We Tapped That Ass. I have never watched that show. I have a hard time, like whatever they say verbally, I have a hard time believing it could be more borderline explicit than what they did in Lucifer. But... I haven't seen Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, so maybe I have to check it out and see what it is you're talking about there, Ryan. All right, Fish Tacos. I like the way you spell tacos. Uh, over under 15%, Ultron is in Endgame. Hmm. I don't think he is, but 15 is a low number, so I'll take the action on that. I'll, I'll take over 15%. That's just a really low number, so I'll take over 15%. Lone Wolf X6 writes, yes, they deserve to die the way she died. Malcolm Merlin. Seriously, that... That whole Merlin thing is when Arrow was still firing on all cylinders. He was a great villain. I, I love Malcolm Merlin in Arrow. I thought he was a great villain. That whole thing about his wife was killed, by, I believe, by muggers in the city. And so he just wants the city to pay for it. You know, it's he was a good villain. He's kind of represented when Arrow was firing on all cylinders. And yeah, I love that character, man. Uh, Darth Sidious writes, uh, hi, Rob. I was just wondering if you went to Celebration because I think they might have cut the live footage of the Resistance panel halfway through. Um, obviously, Rob's not here, but I can tell you Rob did not go to Star Wars Celebration. He was off in Seattle celebrating his mother's birthday while Celebration was going on. Um, uh, Jamie Lee 10 writes, Minecraft was brief briefly used on Ready Player One by Warner Brothers. There's so much in Ready Player One. I mean, like everything was in Ready Player One, right? I don't remember seeing Minecraft, but I don't doubt for a second that you're right. I do not doubt for a second that you're right. 
because they there was so much in that movie uh, Darth Sidious writes, so I wasn't able to see the trailer and they haven't seemed to put it on their YouTube channel. I don't know what trailer you're talking about. I'm going to assume you mean the new X-Men trailer. It was like I saw it this morning on Fox's website or on Fox's YouTube channel. So that's where I saw it. But then again, Darth, you might be talking about another trailer. I'm not really sure off the top of my head. Uh, Anthony DeRizzo writes, Some D-bags like to post spoilers and ruin the film for everybody, but not us. We avoid spoilers and D-bags. Whatever it takes. Hashtag Filthian Nation. Thanks so much for that, Anthony. And yep, listen, I know it's going to be basically impossible to keep spoilers off our YouTube channel. Particularly, we have live chats. And that means any kind of, you know, ass who thinks they're cool can jump in there and drop spoiler bombs and stuff like that. And you know, at the end of the day, what can you do about it? So I know it's going to be possible, but that doesn't mean we're not going to try. So we're going to try our best to try to limit that. We're going to try to keep the live chat safe for people. I've been trying to tell people, hey, if you want to watch the live show, but you're really nervous about spoilers being dropped, just turn off the live chat. You can do that. You can, you can watch a show live and turn off the live chat. That might be the safest thing, but we're going to do our best. And I appreciate that, Anthony. Thanks a lot, man. I, I appreciate that a lot. All right. Lone Wolf uh, X6 writes, first time chatting a live show with Robin Ashley on it. And I want to say awesome and hello. Thank you so much, Lone Wolf. So I was wondering who your favorite characters on Game of Throne, Thrones is. For me, it's Arya and Tyrion. Hashtag um, Valar Morghulis. I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, for me, it's Tyrion. It, it just he drinks and he knows things. He is the smartest guy in the show. He's the funniest guy in the show. He's had some of the best storylines in the show. He's had an incredible journey as a character. Like him, I think him and, and uh, Sansa have maybe had the most amazing journeys from the beginning of this series to where they are now. Uh, their journeys have been incredible. And I, so I'm going to go, but I'm going to stick with Tyrion. I mean, there's a lot of characters I love, Jon Snow, all the, but I'm I'm still kind of sticking with Tyrion on that one. Uh, C10 Joker writes, uh, one person spoils Endgame, Steve Rogers. Let's go get that son of a bitch. P.S. Turn off media previews on Twitter. That's a good tip, C10. Turn off media previews on Twitter so you have to click on pics or vids to see them and nothing sneaks up on you. Excellent, excellent piece of advice, C10 Joker, because I know a few people who've been spoiled by just going through their Twitter feed and it's just there in front of them, right? That is a really good, for at least just for another week or so, turning off media previews, great suggestion, man. Thank you for sharing that with everybody, dude. That's really good of you. All right, Lone Wolf X6 writes, Hey, John, hashtag blind est man alive. Could you share the joke with Rob if you remember it? <clears throat> Blindest man alive. You stump me. I don't remember. I don't know what it is we're talking about, Lone Wolf. Sorry, somebody email me and let me know what it is, Lone Wolf segment, because I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, Pool of Dead writes, Swamp Thing canceled? What's going on? No, Swamp Thing was not canceled. It just had its 13-episode run reduced to a 10-episode run. It was not canceled. Uh, Diamond uh, Fire and F writes, If you have to kill someone to use the Soul Stone, does that mean Thanos is the only one currently that can use the gauntlet in its full power? That's a great question. Huh. To possess the soul stone, the soul stone requires a sacrifice. You must sacrifice that which you love. So can just anybody else pick up the gauntlet now and wield the soul stone without such a sacrifice? That's a really good question, Diamond. I think that could be a potential plot hole because now if... Honestly, I'm going to be wondering that because now if somebody else in Endgame just picks up the, the gauntlet and starts to wield it, I'm going to say, wait a minute, how come he or how come she gets to wield the soul stone in that gauntlet when they didn't have to make a sacrifice? That's a really good point, man. Let's keep our eye. I think you're onto something there. Let's keep our eyes open for that. But I definitely think you're onto something. Um, Lone Wolf X6 writes, detective. Oh, that's one of my, I don't know why. It doesn't matter how many times Lucifer refers to the detective's um, ex-husband as Detective Douche. It doesn't matter how many times he said it. He said it a thousand times in the show. Every time he says it, I laugh my ass off. I just think it's hilarious. Oh, Detective Douche. Uh, Joel Shields writes, shut up and take my money. Philip J. Fry from um, 
um, Futurama. Yep, that is the greatest meme still out there. The shut up and take my money thing. That's basically Endgame right now. Or are you talking about the Campia Plus streaming service coming for only $75 a month, everybody? You can watch me singing in the shower in the mornings. You can, um, what else can I do for 75 bucks a month? Uh, I'll have Ann and Corey um, break down their favorite anime and that's it. 75 bucks a month and you get to see that. Uh, but I'm gonna probably assume you're just talking about Avengers Endgame and you're right, or Disney Plus, shut up and take my money. Ray, <laughs> Ray Oro, oh, go, this is gonna be good. Ray Oro is of course my brother-in-law. He also does a lot of the graphics for the John Campy channel. Ray Oro writes, for Ashley putting up with you two nerds. Oh yeah, because yeah, me and me and Rob on today's John Campus show, we kind of started getting pretty geeky and sweaty as Schnepp would used to say. We we kind of got into it a bit today. So you're right, Ashley showing a lot of patience putting up with us two nerds. Uh, Carlos writes, avoiding spoilers, only getting movie news from here. We're doing our best to keep all the spoilers up, man. Here's hoping we're able to carry it across the finish line in a couple in, in the next week or so. Uh Andreas Morin writes, Ashley, you're the real MVP. Talk about patience. Yep, she kind of had to put up with us today. Uh, Logan Cochran writes, since Endgame is Stan Lee's last cameo, do you think it would be okay to continue with the cameo tradition with a random hero or maybe even Kevin Feige? I always enjoy spotting Stan. No. I, <clears throat> Rob and I talked about this the other day, and I, the thing is, Stan Lee is the godfather of all the comics. I mean... He is Marvel. He is that guy. He was there to honor what it is he did. So I say no. No, you do those cameos because it's Stanley. You don't go, we need to have somebody cameo in all the movies. Let's make it Stan Lee. No, it was you do cameos because it's Stan Lee. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying they they won't try to revive the tradition. Somebody suggested now that Deadpool's in there. Have Deadpool do the cameo. That would be funny, but it's not the same. They didn't have a, a role for cameos and said, oh, Stan, you get to do the cameos. No, it was you do the cameos because it's Stan Lee. And I, I think you end it there. That, that's, that was an honor for him and him alone. That honor for those running cameos was for Stan Lee and only for Stan Lee. That's the way I feel about it. Maybe they will bring it on, but if they were to ask me right now, do I think they should? I would say no, don't do it. Uh, Austin Wayne Scott writes, unpopular opinion, not really feeling those red and white suits. Oh, that's too, I think the suits are actually really good. Uh, I hope they aren't featured very much. Absolutely ecstatic for the movie, though. I mean, at the end of the day, for me, I really don't care about the costumes. I really don't. They can be cool or they could look dumb, but either way, it doesn't really matter all that much to me. But personally, I think the costumes look really good. And I think they serve a purpose because I think they're specific Quantum Realm outfits, we believe. Um, so they're serving a bit of a purpose. I don't really mind it one way or the other. But yeah, that's interesting that they didn't work for you. But hey, man, it's all subjective. Just because it worked for me doesn't mean it didn't. It has to work for you. But uh, let's see. I got a feeling they're not going to be in a ton of the movie. Or maybe they will. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We're only a week away from finding out, Austin. Thanks for sharing that, man. All right, Dan M. writes, Night King brings back the dusted. Night King gets redeemed at the end of Game of Thrones. The Night King is redeemed, and he comes out as a big hero. Hashtag endgame at Game of Thrones. Uh, wouldn't that be quite the crossover? Marvel and Marvel, the Avengers have to fight the Night King and the White Walkers. Uh, Jeff uh, Newton writes, uh, I am lucky, man. I can always go to a movie with no expectations or demands. Are you guys able to do the same thing with most films? Um, <coughs> I think... Here's what I do. I have expectations. I don't have demands. I mean, I used to as a fan, but more and more the last year or two, I've been really trying to get rid of any demands I have of films. Like when people say to me, what do you want to see in this movie? I'm like, don't care. I just want to see what they have to give me. You know, I, I'm trying to, to do that more and more. But what I've always been able to do as a fan is I can have expectations and thoughts and whatever about a movie going into it, but when I get to the door of the theater and I'm ready to walk through that door, take all those expectations and leave them at the door. Try to watch the movie with a clean mind, clean slate, 
and just judge the movie on its own merits, not on my expectations, not on my demands, whatever. And I think that's the best way. And I think that your approach to it, Jeff, is really important. And that's what I've been trying to do more and more as well. And I think that a lot more people would enjoy their film going experience if they took on that same sort of philosophy. All right. Santez Henderson writes, I have an idea for a movie. Wild scientist makes a car that travels through time. That sounds familiar. With a teenager and it goes 30 years into the past. I call it return to the present. I think it's got a shot to be made. If oh man, something, if only somebody, I can't believe somebody didn't come up with that idea already. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, um, uh, RJ Izzy 17 writes, it will be disappointing if they somehow undo the snap and everyone doesn't interact with each other. Like Dr. Strange hasn't met, uh, Captain America. It's not important. I won't be disappointed by that at all. Look, it's one movie. There are a million things to do in this movie. And there are some things that you got to rank things. You got to have priorities and rank things in order of importance. If it's not important to the story, that Captain America and Doctor Strange meet and go, hello, I am Steve Rogers. Hello, I am Doctor Stephen Strange. Nice to meet you, Doctor Stephen Strange. Why, thank you, Captain America. I've heard so much about you. Like, if that's not important to the narrative, don't worry about it. You know, Rob and I talked this morning, and Rob mentioned that, you know, there's so many expectations that we have going into this movie. Like, we want to see this happen, and this, and this, and this, and this, and there's a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of check boxes they need to do, and they're never going to be able to get around to all of them. And if they try, they're just going to overstuff the movie, and the movie's going to fall apart under its own weight. If it's important, if there's an important story port, uh, an important story point, where, for example, Captain America and Doctor Strange need to meet for something to happen, fine. But if it's not serving the story overall, don't worry about it. We got 30 plus characters in there. We don't need to have 42 minutes of screen time of now we shall introduce Bucky to Gamora. Hello, I am Buck. Hello, I am Gamora, daughter of Thanos. Oh my, we all come from nasty families. Yes, we do. We, do, we don't need 42 minutes of a big meet and greet party where all the Avengers wear name tags. Hello, I am I, War Machine. You know, uh, we... If it's not important to the story, don't do it. There's plenty of things that need to happen in this movie. And they even at three hours, there's not enough time to do everything they need to do. There's going to be some things that have to be left off on the side. So if it serves the story for a couple of characters to meet, do it. But if it doesn't, save the screen time for the important story elements and give more time to the story elements rather than little, hello, Hello. I don't know why they're talking like that, by the way. My name is Natasha. Well, hello, Natasha. My name is Star-Lord. Wow, that's a funny name. Well, actually, it's Peter, but I go by Star-Lord. Maybe you've heard of me. No, I haven't. Well, you should have. You know, we, we don't need to see that, you know, so I'm perfectly fine. Perfectly fine if they don't show a bunch of things that aren't necessary to the story. He's only got one movie left only have three hours, a million things they need to accomplish, keep the time focused on the things that deserve the time and don't worry about the other things. That's how I kind of feel about it at any rate. Uh, but it would be cool to see Captain Marvel meet Doctor Strange, I gotta admit. Uh, CZ Thomas 97 writes, uh, production distribution company decide if a show goes to streaming. Distribution company makes all those decisions. The whoever the distributors. Now quite often, especially with the bigger companies, the bigger companies are quite often both the produ production company and the distribution company so they can make those decisions well in advance. But a lot of times, uh, most of the time, uh, the production company is different from the distribution company. The distributor is the one who determines what happens to a movie uh, once it's made. The production company is the company in charge of making the movie. And so that's how that kind of goes. Under most circumstances, there are obviously some exceptions. Final question of the day comes to us from David Romero who writes, or uh, yeah, Romero writes, could Marvel have secretly filmed a fifth Avengers film while filming three? No, that wouldn't have been possible. That's that's there would have been a thousands of people that knew that was happening. That's just information that would have gotten out. There just wasn't time for it. There also wasn't the contracts for it. So no, Marvel could not, unfortunately, could not have filmed uh, an Avengers five unless like Avengers five is a seven minute YouTube video. Other than that, no, there there's just really no way they could have done that. Unfortunately, because that would be pretty cool to find out that they did that. All right, guys. 
That will do it for today's installment of our companion video. Now we are all caught up on all the stuff you guys sent in. Don't forget the John Campia Show returns tomorrow. That's Thursday morning. Make sure you come on back. Join me, Ashley, and Robert as we got a bunch of things we're already working on to talk about tomorrow. Come on back and talk some more of our favorite things in the world, movies, TV, all that sorts of different stuff. Come on back and join us then. That will do it for me for now, guys. Thank you so much for being here. My name is John Campia, and until our next video, bye-bye.